Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I edit and call through an entire wedding. Now I'm just gonna make a quick disclaimer that I'm not claiming that this is the best way to do things. This is just how I do it. I've had different types of workflows in the past, but this seems to be working for me as of now. If you guys are new here to this channel, my name is Brendan, I'm a wedding photographer. And if you're coming over from my previous video on the wedding behind the scenes, I really appreciate it. And before we start this video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who's taking the time to like, subscribe, and comment on all my videos. It really means a lot to me. Anyways, as you can tell, we're in a different location. We're here in my backyard. Uh, the weather has been super nice here in South Texas. Uh, recently, it's been like in 104, 103. Finally, we're down into the 80s, 90s. So I figured, why not? Why don't we just shoot a video outside? I'm going to show you how I quickly rate and then batch edit photos in order to save you a lot of time. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is that I'm assuming that you've already imported your photos to your hard drive or to your working drive and so in my case here I have my Samsung T5 drive I've already dumped out all of my photos onto that Samsung T5 drive so first things first is that you're gonna notice that there's a lot of videos out there that show you to use photo mechanic now back in the day yes I did use photo mechanic and when I first started wedding photography I had an old 2014 MacBook Air that was super super slow and so I downloaded Photo Mechanic, I bought it and downloaded it, and I used that to speed up my rating process. If you don't know what Photo Mechanic is, it's basically a way that allows you to see raw, raw photos and quickly rate and then transfer over those images to Lightroom. But since upgrading to a newer MacBook Pro that has an i9, graphics card, all that jazz, I really don't feel the need that I need to use Photo Mechanic anymore because the workflow is so quick now uh, with have an updated computer and an updated laptop. So my recommendation is if you have a slower laptop or a slower computer, I would definitely recommend using Photo Mechanic. There's plenty of videos out there on how to use it. However, if you do have an upgraded system, I, I feel like Lightroom, the previews in Lightroom are plenty good and being able to rate your photos in Lightroom uh, should be sufficient enough. So and that's what I've been doing recently, and I haven't used Photo Mechanic since buying a new laptop. All right, so we're going to go into uh, Lightroom, and first thing we're going to do, we're going to import all our photos. And uh, let's see, so we're looking for this last wedding that I did, which is this one here, Kim Zuniga. And we're going to click on that uh, folder. Now, what we're going to do here is we have all our images selected uh, to import. And I have it on my T5 drive, and I'm going to import it using my S external SSD. Now, you can do a few things here. You can build smart previews if you want. So basically what smart previews is, is once you import your photos from your SSD drive, you can work uh, off of the SSD. So you can unplug it. You don't always have to be hooked in. But as you can see here, I got it. Where is it? I got it Velcro to the back of my thing. So, I, I, I mean, I really don't use that. But if you want it to work off-site or off of the SSD or not on the SSD, then you would use Build Smart Previews. And that way, once you do the import process, uh, you can work without using an SSD drive. Uh, so in my case, I always have this plugged in, so I'm not going to check it. And then, so the first tip here is in order to save a lot of time, I have my presets selected. And as you can tell here, I do use um, presets. And the one that I have been recently been using a lot is the Visual Flow Modern Presets. Now, Visual Flow was made by Pi Jerza, and he partnered up with Develop. And if you don't know who Develop is, I'll put a link down below. But basically, Develop got all the camera brands across the board, and they were able to get all those custom profiles and they were able to make a preset that would work for any camera. And if you've used presets in the past, you will know that let's say if I was shooting on a Sony and I bought Peter McKinnon's presets, everybody knows that Peter McKinnon uses Canon. So if I used his presets on my Sony camera, they would not look anywhere near to what the preset would show. Well, Develop solve this issue by making their own custom camera profiles and when you once you do <clears throat> and once you install their software onto your laptop you I can get footage from Canon I can get photos from Fuji Sony it doesn't matter because all of the photos once I edit them uh, will all be 
the same because the preset is designed to work with different camera profiles. I don't know how they do it, but that's just how it is. And so this Visual Flow Modern preset is just, it's been fantastic. It has different lighting scenarios. It's just been great and super streamlined and quick. So before I import it, I always go to my develop settings and I can import it with my preset already applied. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the most common thing which is a soft light modern and we're gonna select that and we're gonna import. Now we wait a little bit. <clears throat> all right, so we're done. All right, so the next step is we gotta go through all of these photos. And for the sake of time, uh, I'm not gonna go through all, all 6,700 photos here because this video would probably be about an hour. On average, it'd take about an hour or so to go through an entire wedding. And so I'm just gonna show you how quickly I can do this, okay? So we're gonna go to our first photo and we're gonna, I got my right hand on the arrow keys, okay? Going back and forth. And all I am doing is I am quickly glancing at which photos seem like I'm gonna be using them in the wedding. Okay, so what does that mean? I don't go and analyze every photo quickly. I do that later. All I'm doing here is I'm trying to condense 6,700 photos down into something that's more manageable, like 800 or 1,000. Uh, that's usually what I end up condensing down. So my left hand is going to be on the one number, uh, on the number one key. And when I hit number one, it see there it sets a rating. And so I'm just going to quickly go and start going, culling through all of these images here. So I'm just kind of looking around, seeing like, okay, here are smiling people. Okay, I got my, my quick uh, detail shots here. I like that. That looks pretty good. I like this one, that's great. We got some work going on here. Uh, wedding day right there, let's see, Saturday the 12th, perfect. And I'm just gonna get all of these detail shots in. Uh, let's see, we've got silhouette, uh, sure, why not? And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of like selecting all of the images from the wedding day details. And let's see, I'm gonna select that. Okay, steam in the dress, but I know I had a better shot of here where there was steam in the silhouette. I remember this wedding. Something, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe one of those. We'll try it. If not, I can always go back later. And so we're just kind of steaming. And we're just doing the getting ready stuff. And I'm trying to capture people. See if anybody was kind of, you know, laughing, interested. Let's see. So let's see, more details, more details. So, you know, here I was getting my flash power settings. Typically I don't get the uh, bride fully, you know, all, I don't take photos until they're, oops, until they're, uh, until they have all the makeup on. So you guys gotta get the point. So I'm quickly going through photos and selecting and rating them. And I mean, you really don't want to break your head over this. Don't take a lot of time analyzing the photos. If it feels good, it looks good, hit one, move on. Because we got another 6,000 photos uh, to go, obviously. So uh, here, more detail shots here. And here's a cool uh, hairspray shot. Uh, we'll use one of these. Maybe that one too. And we'll see. I like that one too. And here we got the dress shot. Boca dress shot. Kind of going more details of the dress. Getting the hanger. Everybody's been doing the hanger recently with their names on it. And let's see more Boca dress. And then here I did some shots with the veil over the, and just to kind of see how those would look. Kind of use those, I'll do a wide shot if I could crop in later. And then here it comes getting, we did some fake up. All right, so I don't want to bore you uh, anymore. Uh, basically, 
that's how I do it. I have to go really quick. If it feels right, then I just select it and I move on. Now I'm just going to do a couple more uh, so I can narrow some down and then I can show you how I can batch edit some of these photos to save time. Okay, so I've got a few images selected. And now once we've uh, already rated, let's say I did the entire wedding and I've already rated them, I'm going to go to the bottom right here on the filter section. I'm going to bottom... Uh, I'm going to go on the bottom right of Lightroom and there's this little thing that says filters off. I'm going to click that and I'm going to filter everything that says rated. So I'm going to click rated and all that did was it narrowed down all of our images to just the rated photos. Okay, so we've called on our images. Now I'm going to show you how to batch edit our photos and hopefully this saves you a lot of time. So. What we're going to do is we're going to edit our first image. Remember, we applied our preset to begin with, so we already got uh, our look, our stylized look that we're going for. And um, most of the time I use soft light, but in this case, this is an HDR or a high dynamic range image. So I'm going to hit HDR. And okay, cool, awesome. So, and then we're just going to kind of like fix the horizon line a little bit. It's kind of hard to see with a mic right about there. Cool. So we got our establishing shot. Now we're going to move on to the next photo. Next photo here. I'm just going to kind of adjust the lighting a little bit. Right about, right about, I don't know. I think that's too bright. Right about there. Okay. Move on to the next one. Okay. So we got some similar lighting situations here. So this is our first shot here. Now what you can do is that I know that there's some other shots here that are pretty similar. Like these with the similar lighting. Similar lighting. You see that? Okay, so we edited our first shot that was taken in the same spot with the same lighting. So what we're going to do is we're going to co hit Command Shift and we're going to select all of these images. And now we're going to hit Sync. And here this allows you to synchronize your settings with a photo that you started with. So we already edited that photo. Uh, we don't want to do local adjustments. We don't want to do the transform, sprout, uh, removal, or crop. But everything else we can leave checked. And then we're going to hit synchronize. And now all of our photos are synced up with the editing. And then I just kind of go and I just kind of double check, make sure that all of my lighting is right. Maybe this one might be a little too bright. That's good. This one's still a little too bright. That's good. And there we go. So we just did 10 photos. And we move on. So let's see. We have another photo here that's kind of the same kind of lighting situation. So let's do there. And we're going to hit Command and select that one. We're going to sync. Hit Enter. And we're going to go to this photo. And this one I kind of underexposed it because I wanted it to be a silhouette. So maybe about there. And then we move on to the next one. And so one of the other things that I like to do is I like to go to a photo that, you know, I didn't really have to do much adjustments to, and I like to hit copy. And that way, also, uh, if I'm going to start a new batch, I'm going to hit copy, and then I'm going to paste it onto this, uh, the settings on here. And let's just say right about there. And so let's see here. All of these photos were kind of taken in the same spot. So, again, we're going to go back to our our dress shot, which I'm probably not going to use this shot anyways, but um, let's see, we're going to get command shift and select that last image there and hit sync, enter. And that's too bright, obviously. So that didn't really work out. And that one's okay too. And we got to bring down the exposure on this one a little bit it's too. And maybe this one too. So maybe I should have uh, <laughs> I should have synced the flower photo with everything. And so we're just going to kind of go through and I just adjust the exposure. I don't really spend a lot of time only on certain photos. So like here, this is soft light. I think her skin is just a little blown out, but right there is pretty good. So we're going to go on, adjust our exposure. It looks pretty good look okay so we have an HDR scene so let's see 
let me go to the photos of the dress here real quick. So let's say um, I have all these photos. Let, I just want to show you real quick one more time. So I want to place emphasis on the dress. Okay. So one of the things that I love about Visual Flow is that I can brighten the dress up to as bright as I want it right about there. So now what we want to do, we want to put emphasis on our dress here. So one of the things that happens when you buy Visual Flow presets is that it comes with a tool pack and brushes and all that stuff as an additional cost, but you can buy it all together. Now, if you don't have this, I can show you real quick how to do it because all I got to do is click and hit Shift M and I can remove this radial mask over and then hit option and then I can really put a lot of emphasis on the dress here, right? That's where I want the eye to go. So I'm gonna darken everything around the dress and now my eye is gonna go to the dress because it's probably the brightest thing and it's right in the center. But if we don't have that, right? So let's go to Command E, Command Z, get rid of that mask. If you don't have that, it's okay. You can just go to radial mask and then we're going to go to our exposure we're going to bring it down to negative 0.5 and we're just going to draw a mask and we're going to extend it out kind of feather it out a little bit right and drag it over our dress and then we're going to hit option and same thing maybe that's a little too hardcore Maybe right about there. And boom, there we go. Go straight to the eye, the eye goes straight to the dress. And we're gonna have another one here. So let's see, we're gonna sync all of our photos before we go that. We're gonna sync all of our photos of the dress and we're gonna hit sync, synchronize. And now dress is here. Then maybe that's a little too bright, right about there. But then we're gonna hit radial burn, shift M. It's still a little too bright, but right there, that brings emphasis right onto the dress and it darkens everything else outside of that little circle. Let's see, I want to show you one more thing that I used to do back in the day. If you don't have the radial mask burn tool or whatever, I feel like the, the radial mask is a lot easier to use. This is a um, radial burn, but um, one of the th ways that I used to add a lot of depth to my images is I can, let's say I want to brighten this up. This took a little bit longer, um, but um, if you don't have the, the tools, the toolkit and everything, that's fine. What we're going to do, we're going to go to our, I think it's called a graduated filter. And what we're going to do, we're going to start dragging this filter and make sure that we have burn exposure or we can just set our uh, exposure to negative 0.5 if you want to do a custom one. And all we're going to do is we're going to drag, right, because we want the emphasis on the brightest part of the image, which is in this case is her mom's face. And we're going to drag over. And we're going to drag four filters over. One, two, three, and two, three. And since we already have our preset, we already have our preset imported and our settings were kind of synchronized. All we're doing is we're just dragging over the filters and we're really putting emphasis on mom because that's where we want the eye to go. Just some quick tips, quick editing tips, you know, since we didn't really have to adjust our exposures too much. Same thing here. Let's see, let's, let's do the, these graduated filters again. So I'm going to go drag up, drag back, drag on top the top a little bit. And I think that's it. And there's our, there's our image. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, that's how I kind of quickly edit and batch edit a lot of my images. Um, they're anywhere between 10 to 12 hours total probably to edit an entire wedding. Um, but if I didn't have a lot of these presets or tools, um, I can't even imagine how much longer it is. But I mean, I can't imagine having to spend much more longer than that because we're not doing portraits or, you know, specialized um, fine art, you know, those really crazy Photoshop uh, photos where you spend 15 hours on just one photo. We're spending like 15 hours on an entire wedding. And so you have to kind of quickly go edit your exposure and then batch edit across similar lighting situations. Um, so I hope this video helps you. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment to let me know what you think. 
and let me know what your favorite way is to batch edit your weddings. My name is Brendan. It was a pleasure speaking to you all. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave it down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.